In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I spent the past few days navigating the world of pre-production prep, crafting a compelling and engaging script outline, and perfecting the art of the hook and the call to action. And I'll be bouncing back and forth between my recorded footage and this voiceover footage for reasons that will become clear later in the video. Yep, that's a call to action for you to keep watching. Hi, it's Allie. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me on my journey today. I really appreciate you being here. So let's just get started. This week, I'm offering a sneak peek behind the curtain of what I've learned and the understanding I have in creating content of pre-production, script outlining, and video flow. If you're wondering how to kickstart your own journey as a content creator, you may find some helpful insights, strategies, and learn from my experiences in doing these steps. And I'll give you the inside scoop on how I'm using my AI sidekick, ChatGPT, to expedite and up-level my outputs. My hope is that by sharing my experiences and my lessons learned, I can assist you and other aspiring content creators simplify or increase the ease in starting your own content creating journey. So let's dive into the topics. Before pressing record, there is a lot of homework that should go in to making a video, hopefully a good one. And my number one goal at the moment and for the foreseeable future is to make good content. It doesn't have to be perfect, that's impossible. But with each new video and the process that I follow to establish a standard operating procedure for creating videos every week or sooner, I want to achieve 1% continuous improvement. I feel that my personal goal is best expressed by this quote from Ira Glass, the host of This American Life podcast. Nobody tells this to people who are beginners. I wish someone had told me. All of us who do creative work, we get into it because we have good taste. But there is this gap. For the first couple of years you make stuff, it's just not that good. It's trying to be good, it has potential, but it's not. But your taste, the thing that got you into the game, it's still killer. And your taste is why your work disappoints you. A lot of people never get past this phase, they quit. Most people I know who do interesting creative work went through years of this. We know our work doesn't have this special thing that we want it to have. We all go through this. And if you are just starting out or you are still in this phase, you got to know it's normal. And the most important thing you can do is a lot of work. Put yourself on a deadline so that every week you will finish one story. It is only by going through a volume of work that you will close that gap and your work will be as good as your ambitions. And I took longer to figure out how to do this than anyone I've ever met. It's going to take a while. It's normal to take a while. You've just got to fight your way through. This is my motivation for putting in a lot of work now and spending my free time on the weekends committed to this endeavor and also being kind to myself and what I'm producing at this stage in the game and recognizing it is far from good. But I believe that I have it in me to make it past this beginner stage and one day my work will be as good as my ambitions. So let's break down the script template and the video workflow that I've created for my videos and why I've introduced the elements that I introduced. So the best thing that I can do to get the YouTube algorithm on my side is to keep you, the viewer, on the platform for longer. If I succeed in doing that by offering good quality content, the YouTube genie will reward me with my wish of exposing more viewers to my videos. So there are five elements that you typically find in a standard YouTube video format. So the first one is the sign-on, and this is the opening greeting that sets the tone for the video. I'm trying to get my greeting dialed in, hopefully, by making it quick and consistent. The next one is the hook. So this is your attention grabber and the thing that keeps your viewer watching the video past the first couple seconds. And I've been writing mine out word for word in my Notion script outline just to make sure that I'm able to say it right because it is so important. Then you have the content. This is the meat of the video. This is where you dive into the juicy details. It is important for this content to align with the objective of your video and to be interesting to your viewer, which is to say this is why I am currently doing a voiceover video. And then once I wrap this up and finish offering valuable informative content. I will be introducing the talking head footage that I recorded a few days ago and I will let that play out till the end. But yet again in doing my editing I am realizing 
I went off script way too much in the recording that I did on Friday morning. And my takeaway from this experience is that going forward, I absolutely will not be recording a video or a voiceover unless I have a clear plan in front of me with the point I'm trying to make and how I'm trying to wrap it up. And speaking of wrapping up, the final element in most videos is the call to action. This can vary wherever it falls in the video. Sometimes I see people adding it within the first two seconds or so. Sometimes I see it like three quarters of the way. And this is the messaging where you to boop the like button if you felt that the video brought you value. Consider engaging with me by leaving a comment or asking a question because you think possibly I could provide you with some insight. Decide that you want to see more videos that I publish in the future and click the subscribe button. And of course, the big kahuna that is watching more videos and sticking around on the platform and then wrap up the video, hopefully in a concise period of time. And then we have the call to action. So this is where I'm very green and I don't have a very robust library of content to entice you with. And so really the best I can offer is suggest that you subscribe if you want to continue following along and learning more about how I'm doing the things I'm doing on my content creation journey. With my call to action, my goal is to drive your behaviors and your decision making and influence you to decide to do the thing that I, or honestly the YouTube genie, really wants you to do. But for now, my call to action options are very limited, but here goes. If you found value in this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And if you have any questions for me, advice, tips, suggestions, whatever, please consider contacting me below. And one more bit of information before I wrap up this video and throw it to the stuff I recorded a few days ago. I was an avid viewer of The Daily Show back when I had cable, and they did a segment at the end of each episode called Your Moment of Zen. And so I decided I wanted to have a moment of happiness at the end of each of my episodes. And basically, it's a twofold. One, I wanted to have an opportunity to start to showcase my dogs because they are my children and I think that they are precious. But I also used to have this sticker in my bedroom that read, happiness is a warm puppy. This quote gives me the opportunity to share a little moment with my four-legged children, Bruce and Grace, who are both mini Australian shepherds who I love and pamper more than words can express. So that's going to be an Easter egg at the end of each of my videos. For anyone who chooses to stick it out to the very end, you'll get your moment of happiness some image or clip of my dogs that puts a smile on my face and hopefully puts a smile on yours. Because at the end of the day, I want everyone to have a great day and I want everyone to be happy. And the happiness is a warm puppy. And now in the event that you would like to see what I recorded a few days ago, enjoy. I came up with the format for these episodes going forward. Friday mornings are the start of my weekend work week in the sense that I'm doing this side hustle on my days off. So technically, although it is Friday morning, it's my first day off. So this is my Monday morning of my work week and going forward is going to be a huddle of sorts where I'm giving you a rundown of what's been happening, what I'm working on this week, what's on the horizon, etc., etc. I'm gonna try to do it quick, but you're gonna get what you're gonna get. It's gonna be close to reality. I'm also dressed ready to take my dogs for the WALK. It is August in Las Vegas, probably right now it's 80 degrees. I'm so trying to systemize the system to make this process of a weekly podcast work with my weekend schedule. And so this is how it looks. 
So let me go to the whole moon analogy. So another little anecdote, there's a book out there called Essentialism. The fundamental point of essentialism is checklists and the value of checklists and how if you have something that you are going to do over and over, you are best suited to create a checklist for that task. I'm trying to create systems. And so I was reading up on this book that has to do with checklists and this author was referencing a comment that Buzz Aldrin made about approaching the act of actually getting into a spaceship and flying to the moon for the very first time. Like thinking about the mindset and the grit and fortitude that those guys had and how I look at it from a distant perspective thinking, holy crap, that's insane. And he explains they had a series of checklists that they just followed to the letter in order to achieve their objective of flying to the moon. And so that's my mindset is for me, this whole journey is like my journey of flying to the moon. I am doing something that I've never done before. I don't have past experience in. There's a lot of information I can gather, but at the end of the day, it falls on my shoulders. I can achieve this task. Like it's a learnable task, but I have no idea. It's anybody's guess how long it's going to take me. And it's anybody's guess the steps I will take to get there. And I'm not going to put boundaries on myself. And I'm going to strive to make informative and entertaining content. But it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Which brings me to my next point. And this is my thought process is if you are aware of the YouTube space, you have probably heard the name Mr. Beast. That is a YouTube content creator who... I believe is like the biggest one. He's been doing this for a long time and his content is for a specific target audience. I am not his target audience and he's fine with that. His genre is young adult. So the content that he is creating is intended to attract young adult viewers to watch his stuff. He could care less about me. And that's the message that I was trying to convey to my husband is, I appreciate the support and I appreciate you be watching my videos. However, you're not my target audience. You don't want to be a content creator. You don't want to put things on YouTube. So yeah, the stuff that I'm talking about is going to bore the bejesus out of you. In the same vein, he watches hunting and fishing YouTube videos. And if he asked me to sit there and watch them, I'd be bored out of my mind because I'm not that target audience. And so... What I was explaining to him is I'm making content for a very specific reason that I'm passionate about and I want to share and the intent is to find the audience that is interested in this topic. And that's why I have the multiple channels. So I suspect a lot of people in my family are not going to really enjoy watching this series every single week and I don't expect them to because they're not in any way interested in making content. But then on my Ali Maiko's channel, I'm going to have one pillar that focuses on my creativity. In fact, this is an example of one of the things that I will be showcasing on my Ali Maiko's channel is ways that I have found creative ways to give gifts. So this is a homemade Christmas gift that I made last year. Basically, I made DIY eucalyptus menthol shower steamers and they are inside the jar. And then I made this cute little tag. So I had to give instructions tell people to place the steamer at the floor of their shower. And there you go. This is the kind of crafty shit that you're going to see if this is your jam over there at Ally Mykos. So I guess the point is there's a lot of people and friends in my circle who think that there is some fixed framework for how I should approach being a content creator. And what I'm expressing to most of them is, you know, I'm doing this out of a passion project. I love cr being crafty. I love doing that kind of stuff. I love sharing it. I wanna find my tribe in that context and I wanna speak to them about these things that I'm passionate about. My team is either gonna be content creators or crafters or people who like to be productive and efficient and create systems or people who like to do things for wellness and self-care to maintain their health. Those are my target genres or those are my content pillars. These are things that I'm passionate about and I wanna find my team or my tribe 
So yeah, I want to learn how to do this thing that I want to keep doing for the foreseeable future in a functional way that is fun and that does integrate with my lifestyle and I'm not going to overwhelm myself and I'm not going to go onto nine different platforms and I'm not going to kill myself and create burnout because that's not sustainable and it's not fun. I want to interact with the technology. I want to learn about AI. I want to learn about how to find my team members on YouTube and I want to learn how do I develop this social network that I've been ignoring forever and how does it work and how does it, what does it look like for me? So that is a very long-winded way of explaining that I'm doing this on my terms and I will be transparent about why I'm doing some things and not others. Yes, I'm gonna do a nice title in the effort of trying to get my message out to the people in my team that I wanna communicate with and I wanna do a good job. So I wanna have a good thumbnail and I wanna have a good title, but I'm not doing it with the motivation of getting monetized or reaching a certain threshold of su subscribers. Either that will come or it won't. That's not the point. I'm setting my objectives and I'm charting my own path. Even if at the end of this year of my adventures in creating first year as a content creator, I'm absolutely acknowledging the possibility that it may be deemed <laughs> not a success in the general understanding, but I'm still gonna view it as a success because I'm a year better off. The whole Malcolm Gladwell, you gotta spend 10,000 hours doing something to become good at it like even the experts who became experts in their fields started out as beginners so that's where i'm at i'm a beginner and my product is going to reflect that but it's still going to be a time capsule if you have any questions for me if you would like to specifically have me reference or respond to a question here like viewer mail please send me an email do the things to communicate with me Thank <laughs> you.